Jizuru, are you okay? I jerked awake to find Okita looking at me, concerned plain on his face. Oh, that morning, or evening, whatever. Oh, had it been a dream? Did you have a bad dream? You're making all sorts of noises. It was an interesting dream, although very, very vague, and kind of played it safe in how vague it was. The pictures were nice, though. I liked the shift. Went all, like, super impressionist kind of stuff like we've been seeing this whole time. Ah, uh, no. No, it's nothing. Nothing. I turned away, unable to look him in the eye. You're a real bad liar, you know? I don't know what it was, but something in his voice was like nails on a chalkboard. I'm not lying! It came out much louder and more accusatory than I had intended. Okita jerked back, his eyes wide, and then looked down almost sheepishly. Sorry, I was just... I was worried about you. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, of course, I should have known that. Uh, why did I yell at him? My nerves felt raw, and my mind was awash in anger, fear, and sadness. Only with an effort could I manage to think rationally. Was this the fury blood in me? You're gonna blame all your problems on fury. Whatever. Okita, I, um... My voice was thick with emotion. Yeah, I'm here, I'm listening. He smiled. I, um... First, horrible. Hate-filled rush was subsiding now, and my chest began to loosen. I remembered something. Back in those demon days. I told him about the dream, how we lived simply and peacefully happy and hidden from the world. We didn't want to fight, we just wanted to live in peace. But the humans came anyway. <laughs> that shift. They killed everyone! We hadn't done anything. I could feel the hate and anguish stir in my breast again. They killed us for wars and their pride. Parents, children, everyone, they killed them all. They murdered an entire village. I didn't want to hate humans, some of them were bad, true, but there were many more who weren't. And where were the good ones, a voice in my head said, on the day humans massacred your family? I can't even make sense of my own feelings. The hatred I felt for humans flowed in my veins, gripped at my chest, pounded against the inside of my skull. I'd never felt anything like it before. Wow! Suddenly after a dream, Chizuru was just going like full Magneto on this one. Hates the humans. Even as I struggled, the hate drove out everything else. I could feel my mind begin to slip. This is a big change since... We only found out we were demons, like, a couple chapters ago. So, maybe she's just taken the last couple months to ruin her own demonness. I don't know. There's a sound of a footstep on the grass nearby. How does he keep finding us? What are you doing? Go away! Nobody invited you to the forest picnic with me and Soji. I hate this guy. Then you finally remembered. He stood before us, a sad smile on his face. How'd you find us? His voice was hard. Oh, that wasn't hard. You fought the Imperial Army at Utsunomiya, right? Hmm. Once I learned you were heading north, it was easy to guess where you were going. Here. Right here. He was still smiling, but his eyes were cold. Do you understand the truth now? Nothing's fair. There's no justice. This world rewards the foolish and the vicious, and punishes the weak and the innocent. He spat out the words in disgust and frustration. There was a time that I would have never have understood him, but I was no longer that person. Our home was destroyed by the humans, wasn't it? We were ordered by the Western Domains to fight for them, but when we refused, saying we wanted peace and not war... His eyes were wide and sunken like the sockets of a skull. We were murdered. I didn't want to think that our own very existence meant that humans would also hate and fear us, but my memory of the day we'd lost everything was still fresh in my mind. Kaoru's misery and rage were all too easy to understand. And now, to last, your comfortable, pleasant life is over, and you understand the unremitting cruelty of reality. His smile looked somehow tired, and he stared off at some invisible point in the distance as he spoke. I'm really not sure what more he could take from us at this point, so I'm really not threatened, and I'm just like, this guy's gonna do whatever the heck he's gonna do anyway. So just... whatever. His smile looked somehow tired, and he stared off at some invisible point in the distance as he spoke. I mean, he's taken our humanity, he's taken our demonness, he's taken 
our own past and has now kind of subjugated it onto his own. Um, because we did have, like, this very happy part of our childhood that has now been completely dismissed because our entire, uh, the rest of our family has been killed. Now, we are finally equals. I almost thought I saw his shoulders sag with relief. The misery I endured for so many years, you have experienced in a fraction of that time. You understand what I suffered, and so no long have I any reason to hate you. Fucker. I turned bewildered toward Okida, but he said nothing. Okida, you wanna just, like, slap this guy up? Just, like, carve him into pieces, do it. I don't care, I'll, I'll help. Let's get him. I'll take a sword when he's dead. I'll have two swords, I'll be twice as awesome. Once I return home, I plan to revive our clan. I will take back the life that was stolen from us. You mean you want to bring back the Yukimura family? How? With who? It's just the two of us, and that's weird. But not before I bring justice to all those who did their best to destroy me. The western demons, living fat off the slaughter of their kind. The humans who infest this country. His eyes burned with hate. I shared Kaoru's pain, and so his rage didn't frighten me. I felt only sadness for him. With Kodo's improved water of life, we can create a whole army of furies that don't lust for blood or fear the sun. Even those from weaker demonic lineages could regain their strength through the water of life. We will found a kingdom of our own! There's a lot to take in, but one particular thing had caught my attention when I spoke. My voice was timid and small. Is my father with you? Kaoru nodded. Come with me, Chizuru. What? Everything he'd done so far had made me think our differences could never be reconciled, but now he was inviting me to come with him? You understand, don't you? Okita, you can come as well if you like. We'll destroy anyone who stands in our way and carve out a part of this country where we can live. If they had indeed removed the side effects of the Water of Life, then such ambitions were certainly within their reach. Could Kaoru really create the kingdom he dreamt of? Could I live there with Okita by my side? Bit my lip. It sounded so wonderful, like a dream come true. No, that's not an option for me. Okia's voice snapped me back to reality. Come on, Chizuru! Don't let this uh, sickly sweet person talk you into nothing you want to do. Karu's smile twisted into the cruel thing I'd seen so many times before. You needn't answer right away, dear sister. I'm happy to give you time to consider my offer. We'll be waiting for you. By the time you get home, I hope you've made up your mind. Kaoru. I started to speak, but he'd already turned to walk away. Even if he hadn't, though, I had, didn't have an answer. Didn't know what to do. Okita caught my eye and opened his mouth to speak when his body twisted violently. He fell to his knees with a pitiful moan. Okita, now is not the time to do this. Like, now? Great. Okita! Fury blood within him was once again pounding at the walls of his sanity. Not in front of my brother. I moved to help him when suddenly I felt myself overcome with sudden dizzy. No! Dang it! Me too! Ah! I could hear my heart pound. I wanted blood. There it goes. We knew it was going to happen. I wanted Okita's blood. The impulse was stronger than anything I'd ever felt. My heart, not my throat, demanded solace in the form of blood. If we're gonna, if we're gonna trade. What is happening? My forehead felt hot. I reached up to touch it and felt something hard under my fingertips. Spinning around to put my back to Okita, I grabbed my hair and pulled it forward in front of my face. And it's white! Yeah! No! That's bad, but kind of awesome. And I'm okay. Oh god. My entire body spasmed. I reached for my forehead again. There was no mistaking it. Two horns had grown out of it. I am so demon. Hells yes. Was this an effect of the water of life? Was I beginning to turn into a fury? Had the Fury Blood's invasion of my body called for my demonic appearance? I tried to think, but the dull throb of thirst had risen to a piercing scream. It was getting harder to breathe, and every muscle in my body seemed to be pulling in a different direction, threatening to tear me in half. No! No, that's bad! Don't do that, Chizuru! Don't be a demon and rip everything apart, please! That'd be awful! I wrapped my hands around my body and curled up as tight as I could manage. Then, a gen then I felt a gentle hand on my shoulder. Please, don't look at me. My voice was scarcely more than a moan. Please, go away! Chizuru, do you want blood? His hand pulled me around to face him. 
Oh. Standing there was a creature just like me. There were no horns on his forehead, but his hair, just like mine, was white, and his eyes, I could see the thirst for blood. That moment, I realized that I was no longer alone. I've... I've got fury blood. Might make you more of a fury. He was still con concerned for me, despite the incredible pain he was in. I'm a little worried about that, to be honest, but if you want it, I, I won't tell you no. Just speaking was an effort for him. Okita, I... I don't... The thing is about this is that, despite it being completely consensual, it still hurts him if I take his blood way more than it hurts my me. And that's kind of been my concern the whole time, is that we have, we have been there for him, we have a chance to actually make it even and like be able to share blood with each other, and that's kind of awesome and very kinky, but also awesome. But, hmm, huh, this is actually something where we could actually like hurt him. I don't know. I don't think we'll endure it though. Enduring it sounds way too macho and pointless, really. And I think that's my biggest, my bigger problem is that enduring it just seems like futile. And yeah, but let's get into let's get into the kinky stuff. Let's take that blood. I want blood. Hurt too much. I I had to. I want your blood, Okita. Something flashed across his face, too quick to see. He said nothing, only took out his wakazashi and drew it across his skin, leaving a line of thick red blood. Oh. At the sight of it, my body took over. My mouth clamped over itself over the wound, and when the first sweet drop hit my tongue, a shiver of pleasure ran through my body. Was it the same for him when he drank my blood? Okita, you... I pulled away and spoke, my voice breathy and hoarse. <sighs> Thanks. His mouth twisted up in a half-smile. He set the cool blade of his wakazashi against the warm skin of my neck. Is he gonna go in my neck? Ooh. Closed my eyes. There was a hot sting, and then I felt his lips press against me. As I felt him begin to drink, I lowered my own mouth back to his wound to do the same. Mmm. To look at the pair of us, mouths stained with one another's blood, anyone would have called us monsters. This is really romantic. But even so, I, I felt a strange sense of joy and warmth. I had no doubt that I would have been terrified had I been forced to suffer through this alone, but I wasn't. Okita too, was a beast intoxicated by the sweet taste of blood. I no longer cared whether I lived or died or went mad. I discovered the sweet ecstasy of blood and the joy of sin. All of those words are very good. All of those are very, very good. Ecstasy, the joy of sin. Oh, she's got cute little horns. Wow, that was a great scene. The night wind drifted silently through the forest. We'd made good time and reached our destination for the day a little ahead of schedule. Now it was the time to rest. Sorry, there's a little bit of tonal whiplash there. Um, whew. That was hot, first, obviously. Second, a lot of... I don't know, there's almost something, like, biblical about it. The, the ways in which they have their demonhood and yet they're sharing blood, calling it a sin in, in such a way that... I don't know. There's something there and it's really, really cool, but it was just some, some really great lines. So now we are going to head in to... Um, hopefully going... Wait, was Karu there watching that whole thing? We, did, we didn't get closure on that part. Did he leave? Or did we just do this whole thing in front of him? Because that would have been awkward. Either way, that part, that's a little weird. Either way, um, we made good time, we reached the destination, apparently everything was okay after that. Um, enough to where we were able to just continue on our mission, and so now it was time to rest. And I would very much appreciate rest right now. Only a little farther. We'd nearly reached my family's former home. Tomorrow we would like to see Kaoru again. I still hadn't decided what my answer would be. 
I wanted to know how Okita felt, but whether or not to accept Kaoru's offer was something I had to decide on my own. Also, I'm pretty sure Kaoru's walking us into a trap. There's no way that he's just like, Everything's cool between us now! Water under the bridge! You've suffered enough. Come here, Chizuru. Huh? He smiled and held out his hand. I took it. Um... Before I had a chance to ask where we were going, Okita was already on the move. Where are we going? What are you doing, Chizuru? Or what are you doing, Okita? Oh my. When we stopped, we were standing in the clearing. Looking up, I could see the serene beauty of the night sky laid out before me. The silver moon shining down on the treetops. Well, it was, a clear, it was clear today, so I figured it might be clear tonight, too. You seem kind of down. I thought this might cheer you up. The smell of the forest filled the early summer air, and even something as small as stargazing kind of filled me with joy. I do feel better. I felt as if the chains that bound my heart had loosened. <laughs> okay, that's a little over dramatized, but sure, the, the chains that bound your heart were loosened. My troubles weren't gone, but they were lessened. Okita's brow creased as he looked down at me. 